the disturbing truth about current FPS games. Let's get into it. Yeah, what's good guys? Hope you're all doing well today. So recently I saw a video that Enders made talking about the decline of FPS games. Oh. It's a really good watch, but while I was watching that video, it got me thinking. Yep, that was also a good video. I recommend go see in that go see in that video. Uh Enders. And it's funny. You know what's funny? Everybody's using uh Battlefield as their as their chief example about the decline of FPS games. <sighs> Man. Thinking about the topic as well. And more or less, I think we must ask one big question here. Do we like what we're good at, or are we good at what we like? That is a good question. Do I like what I'm good at, or are you good at what you like? Uh, I'm curious to see what he's going to say, because I have actually have no idea. <sighs> Do I like what I'm good at, or am I good at what I like? I don't know, probably a little bit of both. I'm not going to pretend that I've seen and played every FPS title since the beginning of time, but just like Enders, I'd like to think that I lived through some of the golden ages of gaming. I played yep. CS 1.6 and Halo at school during German classes, yep. came back home and grinded Team Fortress 2 and Counter-Strike. Yep, played a lot of Halo, Halo 1 when it came out, did a bunch of uh, land parties over at my friend's house that I would always ride my bike down to his house, carry my Xbox and my backpack, and played a lot of Call of Duty whenever I worked at CeCe's Pizza. We were on that shit all the time. So much fun. Built bases and got offline raided by Brazilians in DayZ mod. And then of course, I found Battlefield at the end, and I played Battlefield 3 and Don't Battlefield 4 KPM religiously. Bad, I'd always look forward to getting home from school and just getting onto whatever the boys and I were playing at the time. And simply put, you didn't really have to look far and long for a good time. Now, maybe it's a product of getting older, but I rarely play games off stream these days. I haven't been properly addicted to anything in a long time, which is probably for the better. But either way, I tend to believe the FPS games have really taken a steep decline, and the reasons why are both simple and pretty sad to think about. Well, to me, I think the decline really began with games that followed Counter-Strike. In the beginning of FPS games, players have competed against each other. It's always happened, it's human nature, and it isn't yep. really anything that compares to that kind of high stakes environment. CSGO, however, was that game that really brought competitive matchmaking and ranking to the general public. Thing is- Was it, was it CS that did it first? Or was it Halo 2? I thought it was Halo 2 that did it with, uh, what was it? They had their, their ladder that they had, and it was like level one to 100. Whenever you did like, X amount of, like one X amount of matches, you just go up a level, you know, um, the people you verse would always be about your same level, give or take, I don't know, one, one to three levels, I would say. I don't really remember. It's been so long <laughs> since I did that. Is the game has no shortcuts. Anyone can hop into the game, but it's going to tell you exactly how good you are with a little badge next to your name. And if you want to progress further, you will have to work for it. To me, and I'm sure many others, this was the addictive part. The game doesn't actually spoon feed you at all. You just have to progress as a player, figure out what you're doing wrong and how you can improve and mm -hmm. grind it out. But what happened after CSGO? Well, I think companies started to focus a lot more deeply into financial optimization of their games. And looking at CSGO, it's a game that just sold keys for the crates. You know what just occurred to me? What if like stick and ball sports did that? Or maybe we've already seen that. Like, what if soccer or basketball or football or whatever real sport optimized their game for money instead of you know all you need to do to play the game is just go to the store and go buy a football and then voila you're playing football all you need to do go to the store go buy a basketball and go find a basketball court and then voila you're playing basketball now granted there are some sports that you know the buy-in is a little bit more like I don't know, I would say maybe things like golf or paintball or NASCAR or, you know, stuff like that. There is like an obvious, like the buy-in is way like huge. But then again, I would argue that not many, like the, the former sports, like soccer, football, and, and uh, like basketball and, and like more people play those sports than like the the more expensive sports and 
As far as keeping players interested, Valve has historically been very inactive with the game. It barely gets updates, and when it comes to what you're actually getting for the price, you're pretty much just getting a game. Like, you're, you're getting the game, the mechanics within it, and that's about it. If I do, if I recall correctly, isn't CS, like, free? Like, free to play? Or right, like, right now? That's, like, the, the model that everyone is using right now, and honestly, it's probably the best thing that you could do for your for your FPS game is, you know, put a lot of hard work into it and make it free. And then you can inject like whatever, like microtransactions, cosmetics into it, you know, as long as it doesn't affect gameplay, then I think that that would be fine. In 2016 though, I think this is where the downfall really began. Starting with Battlefield 1, I think this game was the beginning of the end for the Battlefield franchise. If you look at the mechanical complexity of each Battlefield game and graph it over time, there'd be a very, very steep drop off at Battlefield 1. Probably peaks around BF4, and then, yeah, sharp decline at Battlefield 1. The gunplay was very spread heavy, so it doesn't really reward a crazy amount of accuracy. It more rewards using the right weapon for the right range and understanding how that system works. The movement is really, really dumbed down. The vehicles are so easy that anyone can use them. Yeah, and that's the whole reason that they probably went that way. Uh, they wanted to appeal for a broader audience rather than staying with the main things that appealed to, like, that got their audience in the first place, you know? So, yeah. And there's an incredible arsenal of explosive and spammy weapons that had me avoiding this title like the plague. I know many that love the game for its atmosphere and still have a great time on it, but I also know an equal amount of people that are stuck with Battlefield 4 as I did. The game was designed in a way that allows players to reach a really competent level very, very quickly and easy. You want to know what's funny? I just realized. I think Super Smash Melee is the only older version of a game that is still relevant in tournament scenes today. Whereas, as far as FPSs go, it's always the most current version of that game. No other game has managed to do that, I think. Like, there's been so many, like, Super Smash Melee tournaments, and they're, like, significant. Um, you know, but with FPSs, it's just, it's just not the same. I wonder why that is, you know? <sighs> Easily. And this, my friends, is where we revisit that important question. Do we like what we're good at, or are we good at what we like? Well, in my opinion, it's a bit of both. You're probably likely to fall into both of those statements. Yeah. You're going to like things that you're good at due to a sense of accomplishment and satisfying your ego. Not everyone is going to get good at things that they like. From a game development perspective, you want people to like your game. Now, is it easier to make people like the game through design choices, mechanics, marketing, or whatever? Or is it easier to make the player feel good at the game and just like it because they're good at the game? I think the second option is a lot easier, and yep. it's something that has really taken a main stage in the gaming space. Yeah, because if you can get a bunch of people, like a broader audience of people, feeling some sort of way about your game, they are more likely to spend money on that game as opposed to getting like a smaller audience to feel like really good at the game and... You know, you, you hook those players, they're for sure going to buy every little cosmetic, every microtransaction, um, you know, because it came out and they want it for, for whatever, you know? It's, it's, you know, they're putting, they're, they're, they're basically hedging their bets on how many people are going to enjoy the game and hopefully spend money on it. And now this is where skill-based matchmaking and engagement optimized matchmaking also come in. Oh, these systems. Everybody loves these systems. If you don't want to dumb down your mechanics but still want to retain players, these systems are very useful. If you didn't include skill-based matchmaking on KD or whatever, it's very likely that all the KDs of players in, let's say, a Call of Duty game will fall along a normal distribution or a bell curve. Yep. Now what SPMM aims to do is to match every player in games with opponents of equal skill levels. This will raise the KDs and improve the experiences for everyone on the left side of the graph, but it will lower the KDs and hurt the experiences of everyone on the right side of the graph. Yep. So if we draw a line straight down, 
this way. SBMM is fine for this side of the audience, but the more you progress along this side, SBMM is, it feels absolutely terrible on this side because every match feels like you're, you're just sweating your balls off. All right. Whether you're on M and K, whether you're on controller, you are just trying your hardest at all times. And it's not, you know, bad. Like SBMM, it, in, uh, what do you say? Engagement based matchmaking or whatever. These systems aren't, well, I would say, I would argue engagement based is like worse because the only point of that is to give, you know, it's to make this player stay on longer. Um, but SBMM is good for ranked modes. SBMM is okay. It's good for ranked modes and horrible for public matches. Just like that, because you know, like I said before, anytime you are playing a match, essentially it's, it's, it's like I said, you cannot just get off work and just hop on the game. And if you're good and you're on this side, every match just feels like it goes from zero to 60 in like 1.1 seconds. You know, if you're like not the greatest player and you're just chilling and you get off work and you want to do a little, get good, uh, do a little, like play your game. It's just gonna, you know, it's not going to really affect you. Thing is everyone on this side is still having a decent enough time. It's those that are below average that are getting a significantly better experience with SBMM. And the objective within all of this is just getting those players to launch the game the next day, open up the shop, see there's a sick new skin there and spend their hard earned money. Now in games where there's a rank system, there is no issue with SBMM at all. Yeah. That's literally just how it should work. But in games without a rank system, it feels really, really unsatisfying to basically be working against a moving target all the time. Yeah. However, this system clearly works as COD has implemented this kind of matchmaking in many titles now, and I do not see it stopping anytime soon. Let it be known that SBMM isn't necessarily the end of it either. Activision supposedly has patents for skill-based hitbox sizes. What? <laughs> this is new to me. Let me read this real quick. Okay, now that skill-based hit detection is pretty much confirmed... How are you handling this game now? This is a post on Reddit, I take it, for discussion. If anyone doesn't know what I mean, Activision's patent about bullet reg, paragraph 0081, it means more skilled players, a uh, more skilled player has a variable multiplier that decreases accuracy and other parameters. Holy. Uh, with less skilled players, has a variable multiplier that increase accuracy and other parameters. What are you doing now? Are you just boycotting the game or just keeping it in mind while playing? I'm a bit torn on this. The game is still fun, but it's hard to invest any more time in it, knowing that the game influences your experience so much. What's your opinion on this? Holy crap. I did not know that... Uh, like, I read that skill-based matchmaking um uh like patent but i just i didn't really i didn't really read it like word for word and you know with a fine tooth comb i kind of just skimmed over it or whatever but this is essentially like you're playing a different game and how many like variables is like gonna be i don't know how like is it just gonna be like one side of the fence and other side of the fence or like oh you got um what is this a uh, variable multiplier that decreases accuracy and other parameters what is this accuracy and other parameters so not only are your bullet you have to worry about your bullets going every which way you have to worry about is it doing the right damage is the recoil the right way is the what do you call it <sighs> Is the fire rate, the correct fire rate? Are all these attachments I'm grinding for going to do exactly what they say? Is there enough? Is it going to, you know, if I put an attachment on, is it going to correctly silence my bullets? Is there going to be like more, more or less bloom? Is there going to be like enough gun sway and like visual recoil? This is <laughs> the main thing 
This SBMM bullshit is the main thing that's killing COD. <laughs> and the longer, like, the more people know about this, and the longer this stays out in public, it's like, no wonder Call of Duty is dying. <laughs> this is horrible. <laughs> it, you have no incentive to get good at Call of Duty, or any game that implements skill-based matchmaking. There is zero um, incentive. Along with skill-based footstep audio. This kind of stuff really doesn't sit right with me, and I hope it stays as a pattern and nothing more. Yeah, because while you're, while you're over here playing chess, your opponent is playing checkers, and they're beating you. And that doesn't feel good. Biggest issue is that when you take a game, you dumb down the mechanics, and then you add an aggressive SPMM on top of all of that, that's when you have a real problem, and that's what NW2 did. And unfortunately, the game is losing players at a very consistent rate. Well, maybe I should say fortunately, because the only way that we're going to get past this kind of stuff is by having games that do these really kind of shady practices die out and not get rewarded in a super lucrative way. Like, Yeah, exactly. If that FPS is implementing some sort of system that you don't like, stop playing it, stop wasting your money on it, and move on. Play something else, you know? If you want to hang around like some jaded person and make videos on it, you know, I mean, I mean, you could do whatever you want, essentially, but if you make a video on it, you're still giving it like publicity or whatever. But in the end, stop playing it. Ignore it. Just move on. Some other games definitely have. Another issue with games is that now we are in the age of everyone having really, really fast internet. When you get a game, you don't necessarily have to be downloading the final release of that game. You're pretty much just downloading the first build of it. And a lot of games release yep. in a very unfinished state. And due to great marketing and... <laughs> How fortuitous of him using Battlefield. What is this? 2042 or whatever? <laughs> as the example <laughs> just go back and look at older videos on YouTube about when this game ca first came out it was atrocious there were hover ships that were literally just climbing buildings and I think if you were just playing and accumulate like X amount of like points or whatever you can just summon like a hover ship right on top of you at any point pre-orders they don't really have to deliver anything crazy and on top of all of that, you have live service models, which, as we saw in Battlefield 5, they literally abandoned that game and delivered a lot less than previous titles did. I don't know about you guys, but I definitely prefer the old premium system. At least then, they're pretty much contractually obliged to provide a certain amount of content, rather than just drip feeding like they have with live service. There has been games at live service. Yeah, I, I don't really like live service games. I do and I don't. Um... The whole drip feed of content um, is fine if the content is significant, but developers uh, stating that cosmetics e equals content is not good. It's not good for the game. Whatever game you're, you're playing. Cosmetics is not content. Service like Fortnite that did it really, really well. Constant updates, but they're going to do it really well if the game is generating billions of dollars, right? They're not going to do it so well when the game is just scraping through and they don't have to. So, what is for certain, we're definitely past those old days of popping a disc in the computer or CD, installing the game off the CD, and you get a finished product right then and there. No, yep. You download the game, and it may or may not be finished, and it could be up to a year, as we've seen in these Battlefield games. Until yeah, most likely, it's not finished. That's, that's the chances. Most likely, it's not finished. Well, the game is actually fully playable. And now let's put on some tinfoil hats, as this has not been confirmed fully, but Overwatch 2 did something really interesting that actually just made me quit the game. On the oh. November patch that they rolled out, there was a patch note that said that they made some changes to the matchmaker. Now, ever since then, many players have been reporting massive win streaks and massive loss streaks. I have no idea about the matchmaking system for Overwatch. Supposedly, they've changed the matchmaker to basically force you either on a good streak or a bad streak. And after experiencing a few days or a week of this... That just sounds like a horrible idea. Basically, I would win six to seven games in a row. It felt like it was being handed to me, though, and it didn't really give me any satisfaction. 
I kind of deep down knew that the game was handing these wins to me. I'd play really bad in some of these games, and we were just steamrolled. Like, we were predetermined to win that match. And then I'd play, you know, like six to seven games in a row the next day, and they'd be, all be losses. Maybe one win where you play out of your mind, and you just barely scrape by. In the end, I think the developers... I want to know what goes through these developers' heads when they make these systems. Like, whatever the Overwatch system is for matchmaking, skill-based matchmaking, engagement optimized matchmaking, like, for, like, at least the ranked portion of your game. Whatever happened to, like, if I win a match, I, I go up a level, and then I verse other people on that level. Understandably, what's going to happen is... The more, like, the better you get and the more your skill goes up, the less chances you're going to be able to queue and find a match. So, what does that mean? So, the devs have to balance uh, queue time with, like, who's going to be on your team as far as, like, similarly skilled players. So, the better you get, the, the longer it is you're going to have to wait. So... That you do have to take that into concern. I did say something about it, saying that the objective of the matchmaker was to change your rank, meaning that you'll either try to get you a rank up or a rank down. And just knowing that it's extremely just, it's not genuine. If I win a game, I want to be winning because my team is better or I play better or whatever like that. I don't want it to be predetermined. And that's literally what ruined it. As soon as I kind of figured out that it was putting me on big win streaks and big loss streaks, I uninstalled the game. Don't really have any interest in that. And now I'm back in Battlefield. Because if the game does one thing well, it's the fact that it still matches me with a nice mix of crops, average players, and farmers. I really enjoy the variety and it feels organic. I really do hope FPS games do take a turn back to purity though. They won't. You can hang around as long as you want. But they won't. Your best bet is uh, to play some like, like indie FPSs. And just, you know, try to have fun with, with those, you know? Like for me, right now, I'm playing Crab Champions and Combat Master. I'm having a ball on those. And they're not like competitive or anything. But they feel good and they're fun. And that's all that matters. No more rig matchmaking. You have modes at SBMM and modes without it. And mechanics that on their own provide enough reason to play the game. Seriously, like why did I play BF4 for like 8 years? It's because of the mechanics. That's what kept bringing me back. Why do I play Valorant, CS, R6, or even Overwatch before they change the matchmaker? It's because of the competitive experience. Pretty much any of those games, if you put enough time into them, you'll probably enjoy them because that competitive feeling is enough to keep people coming back. I really do hope that developers and companies start to realize that artificially trying to boost kind of player retention and stuff like that just isn't the best way of doing things. Maybe in terms of numbers it is. But for the sake of the players, it'd be so refreshing just to have a game that's designed really well and in a genuine way. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the- Yeah, the current developers that you're talking about that you hope are going to do this, they're never going to do that. Because they have people looming over them that are always about the money first, alright? They don't care about your experience. They just care about that that big up arrow, alright? Give me, give me more money. Give me more money. Did we make profits this quarter? Great. Keep that going. All right. There's no need to change. The perspective on this one. A little bit of tinfoil theories in this one, but a lot of things that have also been just straight up confirmed and a few opinions in there as well. Anyways, take it easy, guys. And I'll catch you on the next one. Peace. Good stuff. Yeah, I definitely like this video. I mean, yeah, this is like some Doomer FPS shit or whatever. Um, but again, you know, I'm just trying to reiterate what everyone else is, you know, thinking. Oh, there's Enders. Oh, nice. Pain. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, but, you know, I mean, I'm still hopeful for the FPS genre. I mean, I like it, especially since I started aim training. I've only liked it more and more. Um, but who knows, you know. The more FPSs that come out um, with like some sort of competitive experience, some ladder, and they use skill-based matchmaking or EOMM or whatever, like the more I realize it's like it's just nothing but downhill.
But, you know, what can I say? Alright? That's pretty much it. Alright? See ya.